Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this short game to video, I have a question for you. How many processor cores does your system have? Or how many threads? Chances are good you're saying eight. Maybe. Maybe 16. And most likely, perhaps even just four. Well, imagine having up to 128 threads running on your system simultaneously. And that is then a Paul's server processor from AMD, which is popping out in the second quarter of 2017. Now, this processor, just so we're all clear, is not necessarily something you're going to be running Doom on. It is a server processor. So obviously that's going to be for high-end compute scenarios, everything down to, you know, acting as like web servers in virtual machine type of configurations. With that said, this processor is still going to be a beast. As we all know, AMD have, of course, released Zen, or Ryzen, if you prefer, to the desktop market, and it's doing pretty well for itself. The sales for the actual CPU are very high, although there are some motherboard issues at the moment, primarily availability and some early BIOS, but other than that, industry reception is very positive. But the other major market that AMD can definitely target is, of course, servers, because they are consistently a valuable customer because obviously as companies expand they're going to need faster and faster servers and more of them so data centers that type of thing are going to always need more processors therefore it's very important that amd are competitive in that and their market had shrank quite a lot back when they were using optrons back in the days you remember them perhaps they were very competitive and certainly gave Intel a bit of a run for its money. However, Intel have since seized almost all of the server market share and this is something that AMD certainly wants to reclaim. Therefore, AMD are offering up to 45% more cores, 60% more input-output capability, also known as I.O., and 122% more memory bandwidth. It's exciting to see AMD back in the server conversation with a new CPU and sound strategy for why it is the right processor for the modern data center and cloud computing era. This is according to Matt Eastwood, who is the Senior Vice President of Enterprise and Infrastructure and Data Center, IDC. Looking at the product details announced today, it sounds like a compelling combination that will give IT buyers a unique option to consider when making their next upgrade. Just to give you an indication of this, it is a SOC and has 32 core system on chip, which supports for two high performance threads per core. So far, so Zen, obviously just cranked up with a lot more cores. Industry leading memory bandwidth with eight channels of memory per Naples device in a two socket server support for up to 32 DIMMs of DDR4 on 16 memory channels. That's a lot of memory channels and delivering four terabytes of total data capacity. That's a lot of data. And the processor is a processor, excuse me, is complete with fully integrated high speed IO supporting 128 lanes of PCIe. Uh, negating the need for separate chipsets and highly optimized cache structure as well as AMD's Infinity Fabric Coherent Interconnect. If you don't know what that is, we have tackled it before on the channel, but suffice to say it's a proprietary connection which allows two server, two processors, excuse me, or any other devices to communicate with one another rather than needing to go the traditional route. It basically means that the server or the device can be a lot more cohesive when communicating um, across, let's say, a processor to another processor. It is, in short, means that each processor can make sure that it's managing threads effectively and efficiently. And, and also it has dedicated security hardware. This is another thing we tackled a while back. I won't go into the ins and outs of it because it is kind of a large topic, but basically it means that if you have, let's say, if you're running a virtual machine and your friend Bob is running a virtual machine, even if you are the administrator of the machine and you are loaning him out hardware, you could basically can't snoop into the data set of Bob. Uh, and that's pretty good because it means, in theory at least, the machine is going to be a lot more secure. And because the codes are um, not held resident in memory, it basically means that you can't just, even if you're an administrator, if you're injecting a code into one system, let's say one system becomes compromised, one uh, virtual machine, or even if it's the main machine, it's not going to necessarily impact the data for other users, which is pretty damn phenomenal. In terms of the demos they provided, it was the seismic analysis, which is a workload which obviously requires a huge amount of computational power to run. Uh, in the first instance, it took 35 seconds for Intel, half the time for AMD, 
uh, 18 seconds. Second demo, it was 35 seconds for Intel, for Intel, 14 seconds for AMD. And this is thanks to considerably higher memory bandwidth on uh, uh, the uh, AMD machine, which has helped quite a lot in the second instance, plus, of course, the fact that they've got more processor cores. And in the third instance, they times it by four data sets, four billion samples per grid, 10 iterations. On the first uh, two demos, there was only one billion sample grid with 10 iterations. And it took AMD 54 seconds, and Intel just could not run it. There was insufficient memory to load in this particular instance. Naturally, this will scale depending upon your configuration and how many sockets you've got, the amount of memory on board, and all of that jazz. So, what does that mean? If you're a gamer, you might say, well, that doesn't really impact me too much, does it? Well, kind of yes, kind of no. In one way, yes, because it means that developers... Uh, whether you're a game developer, whether you're, you know, just a web user, will have access to faster and faster CPUs, which may impact your experience on the web. But perhaps moreover, and more directly, and perhaps for Intel, uh, the more concerning of which is that it gives AMD yet more market share and more clout. One of the issues, and I know I've not really focused a lot on Rise in the last couple of days, just because I've been working, but I will be getting back to it, and I know a number of you have messaged me, uh, regarding Ryzen, and I am going to be responding to the messages over the next couple of days. But one of the issues with Ryzen, uh, 1080p gaming orientated uh, focus, just for a second, is well, one, the software at the moment is buggy, by which I mean BIOS. Like a couple of people have actually messaged me asking, dude, like why haven't you done this with the memory? It's quite simply because the board is not actually registering uh, the memory running faster. Like at some points it will physically crash if I try to boot running a certain speed, other times if I get that speed it'll work, other times it'll crash windows, other times it'll cause the USB not to work. It's just a bit iffy and a number of people with my board revision have had the same problem. It just seems to be a BIOS problem um, and it just is what it is. So, you know, I could update to a slightly later BIOS which does fix some of the problems but then I get heat issues. So it just, you know, it just is what it is. So I'm just, you know, not really focused a lot on benchmarks at the moment because it just seems a bit unfair. However, the other problem is quite simply that a lot of games, a lot of software, is just optimised for Intel processors. It's that simple. And yes, developers are now going to start pushing more towards AMD stuff, which is good, because it means that we as customers get a better choice. And in terms of this, it means that AMD get a needed cash injection. At the end of the day, companies can only do X amount with the finances they're given, it's like, you know, if I tell you to build a skyscraper, but I give you, you know, a budget of 50,000 US dollars, you're going to say, well, this is going to be like the worst skyscraper in the history of humanity. You're going to have to basically build it out of matchsticks and prayers. On the other hand, if I gave you the budget of like, you know, 200 million, you're going to say, well, okay, then we can do something decent here. And it's the same thing, of course, with AMD. It's not just sales like this and by sales i of course mean not to you and i but to you know the dells or the hps or the googles or whomever else are going to be buying these for their data centers but it actually means that this these sales are going to be able to give amd a cash injection and if you've got a cash injection that means that you can a well design better products and b you can start to give better software support to developers and AMD are doing that. They've given like 300 uh, different uh, developers various support and providing information to them. We know that Bethesda are going to start optimizing for AMD hardware. All of that's great. So things like this, I do like to cover just because it's important for us to remember that yes, we're gamers, but we do indirectly benefit. Perhaps actually the word is directly, not even indirectly. We do directly benefit for deals like this. And it's one of the reasons that, yeah, I'm not super interested in NVIDIA when it comes to, let's say, oh, I don't know, um, self-driving cars. It's just, it's cool. Like the theory is cool. And I like the, I like the practice of it, but I'll be honest, I do think some of the conferences go on a bit too long about it. I just like, okay, well, I want to know about the nose Titan now, not so much with the self-driving car for the next 20 minutes. However, I do understand it is a major integral part of their business. And obviously that means that I'm going to get higher frame rates in games because they've got more money for research and development. Anywho, I think that's just about it for this particular video. I'm going to let you all go. There is going to be a lot of stuff popping up on the channel over the next couple of days. I'm trying to nail down the interview times with Neil Trevitt um, regarding Vulcan. I've 
basically, I think it's going to happen this Friday, but he's got to check with, um, basically the PR guy's got to check with his schedule so we can uh, just make sure that's all okay. So if so, it should be a live interview, so I'm hoping to be able to record that. We've got a whole bunch of um, reviews that are going to be popping over the next couple of days with the... I'll be honest with you, Ryzen, it kind of slowed me down simply because I've had a few issues with it, as people know. And to be honest with you, I'm trying to actually just get used to the whole CPU. And with Amy gone as well for like four days, it just was kind of all bad timing. However, things are coming up pretty nicely at the moment. So thank you all for the support. I'm going to run off now. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.